All right, all right, all right. Hey, YouTube, I'm Lucky, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the TWAB. Uh, we got this week at Bungie, it's Thursday, and my voice is feeling pretty good. Uh, I am just recovering from COVID, so I'm going to try and keep the, the volume down a little bit to not stress the vocals too much, but uh, hopefully we'll make it through this here. So, a ton of new stuff. I mean, Bungie really went over the top here. Uh, the best of your ability, they're doing a bunch of ability changes to the sandbox. Uh, separate melee actions, which has been a, an issue for a long time, especially if you play Hunter. You can throw your smoke, or you can melee, or your shuriken and melee. So you have like a projectile melee, and then you have like your real melee. And so now they've um, separated the two. So you have your charged melee and your uncharged melee, which is really nice. Uh, this applies to other classes as well. Pretty much any class that has a melee that throws a projectile of some kind uh, would love to benefit from this. And they will now, which is really cool. And you don't you aren't forced into it, so you can... Change your key binds on your uh, mouse and keyboard or your controller as you like. So that's nice to see. All the exact details are all written there. It's just a bunch of mumble jumble. Basically, it's as simple as can be. You know, you have two separate key binds. Um, long term ability plans. Uh, Kevin Yanes talked about the vision for subclasses fitting into the Destiny 2 sandbox moving forward. Oh, things are about to get really crazy here. Season 15 ability. Balance pass for season 15. We've prepared a slew of balance changes to raise up underperforming sun classes and tone down overperforming sun classes. Here are the changes general ability, stasis, freeze. So, changing these so that way, when you get like frozen in the air, you'll unfreeze faster, which is awesome. Super happy about that. Shorten breakout animation and camera transition. Sounds great. Uh, this means once you decide to break out, you'll break out sooner. Perfect. Uh, and then differentiated long freeze and short freeze visual treatment and slide they're actually nerfing the slide which is a bit of a controversial one let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below um a lot of people like sliding around uh, but this does promote the shotgun ape play style so getting a 20 percent stability um negative when you slide and a 15 percent shotgun pellet spread increase when you slide 1.5 times flinch is definitely a big penalty so maybe that will stop shotgun aping pretty well in the sandbox we shall see though i have a good feeling that that's gonna that alone is gonna make it a pretty a pretty good change and we won't see nearly as much people uh, sliding around aping with those shotguns we'll see though the rally barricade so we're talking about the half wall which you almost never see anyone use the half wall they always use the tall wall um you get plus 30 stability behind it, plus 10 range, and minus 50 flinch. So that's pretty crazy. I, I wonder if people will end up using this. I don't know if those stats are really going to help that much. Because you are still just extremely exposed behind that thing. But, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. All barricades. Uh, players moving at high velocity will take more damage from going through the barricades now. They're going to protrude into the ground so that way you don't get shot in the ankles if you're a titan. These are some good changes to the barricades. I like this. This is some like good quality of life stuff that we've been needing for a while. All right, Behemoth. Now, Behemoth got nerfed really hard, and people were saying that it's way trash in PvE, which it is. Uh, so now they're going back and they're redoing some adjustments, as they said, and they're they're changing some things. So it's going to be quite a bit stronger, quite a bit more potent in PvE. Uh, one thing that I thought was cool is Shiver Strike is actually getting increased movement speed by 25% after the last nerf. That thing was laughable so that's probably a fair i'd say that's a fair balancement right there and whisper of rhyme fixed a bug where the overshield provided by whisper of rhyme was not scaling precision damage correctly i covered a video on that we're fixing that and we got middle tree hammer okay throwing hammer increase the time before the hammer explodes increase the damage first powerful pv combatants by 50 percent so they're doing a little buff in pve to the middle tree hammer uh, top and bottom tree striker getting a little bit of buff slam detonation radius reduce slam fall off they're making super a little bit more potent uh, middle tree striker uh, they actually have a bunch of other stuff they said we'll say more about this in a future twab uh, they're increasing the duration from four to six seconds on inertia override and sliding over ammo break grants 20 percent melee energy that's really interesting top tree sentinels we got the bubble is actually getting nerfed Increased damage taken from bosses from 0.25 times to 7 times at 0 resilience. Damage taken can scale down from 0.25 based on the owner's resilience stat. Interesting. So, you can... I wonder what 10 resilience would, would give you, you know what I'm saying? That would be crazy. Some crazy changes. Looks like they're doing some a big overall. This is the second time they mentioned this at 0 resilience. So, it would seem like they're going to make resilience a 
pretty meaningful and important stat for PvE. We'll see. We shall see. That's my interpretation. Let me know if you are seeing things or reading things differently from me. Uh, now we got over to the Hunters. Revenant, my class that I've been using for quite a bit now. Silence and Squall. Increase the Squall movement speed by 20%. That tornado is damn slow, so it's good. And it stops when it touches a boss, which is pretty cool. Uh, Withering Blade. Increase the projectile speed and tracking by 10%. All right. I'll say that's fair because right now I literally don't even use the the Withering Blade because it's such trash. Uh, middle Tree Gunslinger. Knife Trick. Increase burning duration from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. Nice. Top Tree Golden Gun. Six shooter damage fall off now starts at 25 meters instead of 20 so they gave it five more meters that's appropriate uh arc strider oh man they had to do a bunch of stuff to arc strider extended passive super duration from 16 to 20 seconds increased heavy slam detonation from five to six meters increased damage first pv combatants by 33 percent deadly reach increased the duration from eight to ten middle tree arc strider Dealing damage with tempest strike now triggers lightning weave timer can be extended by dealing damage with any weapon interesting Arc Staff getting some big buffs. Definitely necessary. Arc Staff hasn't seen any love in a long time. Way too slow. And that was one of the things they addressed. It's so slow. It's so hard to catch up to anyone. We got Middle Tree, Night Stalker. Spectral Blades is just getting nerfed. That's it. No buffs for Spectral Blades. Which is definitely fair because that super is pretty nasty. It actually had one of the highest damage reductions of any super in the game currently. We got reduced from 52 to 47. And when you're invisible from 5 to 3% damage reduction. Now on to the Warlocks. Okay, we've got Winter's Wrath, the Stasis Warlock. Reduce Shatter Pulse damage versus close range supers. Warlocks must now freeze and shatter twice to defeat all these supers. Burning Maul, Fist of Havoc, Sentinel, of Warp, Arc Staff, Spectral Blades. That's crazy. That is crazy. So you gotta freeze them and blow them up twice. Seems a little more fair. That super has been pretty dominant for a while. Oh. Top Tree Dawnblade. Ooh, here it is. This one is the one that's going to piss everyone off. People are not going to be happy about this because people love their top tree Dawnblade. Celestial Fire gets nerfed. It has to be a little more... Uh, you have to be more precise with it. Damage fall off increased at short distances. Icarus Dash. You only get one Icarus Dash now every four seconds instead of two. Which I would say is honestly kind of fair because that double Icarus Dash is so ridiculous. You're just out of there in no time. Um, they increased heat rises from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. And your location now appears on enemy radar when using heat rises. Very interesting. So, some big changes to top tree Dawnblade. Might not be a top tree Dawnblade meta anymore. Middle tree Dawnblade. So we got Well of Radiance now. Uh, again, this is the, the the note that I find just so weird. Increased damage taken from bosses from 0 0.25 to 1.5 at 0 resilience. So I wonder what it is with 10 resilience, you know? It's just going to be hard to get a Warlock to 10 resilience, but... Um, so yeah, it says right there. That would be really interesting to see how the, the changes go. And if we're in a resilience meta in PvE. Increased damage resistance buff for enemy players from 20 to 40%. Guiding flame. Increased duration from 7 to 10 seconds. Increased damage buff from 20 to 25%. Bottom tree dawn blade. Phoenix dive. Reduced delay before dive starts. Can now input a direction to dive in that direction. Interesting. <clears throat> That's crazy. Instead of just diving straight down. That's wild. Um, igniting touch. Ability to rework. Solar ability kills and kills on burning targets now cause targets to explode and burn other nearby enemies who will also explode if they die while burning. Wow. That was pretty cool. We got Middle Tree Storm Collar. Yes. Oh my gosh. Please nerf this into the ground. Increased beam environment collision size to better match collision size with damage size. Reduce beam damage radius in PvP by 20%. Perfect. Reduce beam endpoint sphere radius in PvP by 33%. Nice. Some decent changes. I'm still those those uh, geomags are gonna be a problem, I feel like, but we'll see. Uh, bottom tree storm caller. We got arc souls, increased duration from 12 to 13 seconds. Increase the rate of fire by 10%. Oh god, that's gonna be scary. Uh, electrostatic surge now increases sprint speed when allies are near. Landfall now fires five arc ground projectiles and casts. Whoa. That's going to be crazy. Middle Tree Void Walker. We got Nova Warp. Hey, did we just sunset it or what? Uh, I guess we didn't sunset it. Increased damage versus PV combatants by 73%. Longer slows movement speed while charging slash charged. Whoa. Now detonates on cast. Handheld Supernova. Increased damage versus PV combatants by 100%. Increased hold time from 2.5 to 3.2 per second. 
Holy moly. These are a lot of changes in season 15. Let me know in the comments below which one you are most excited for because there's a ton of changes. It's almost like a whole new game. And then they go over this last one here, which is uh, powering up the stasis experience where with each season they come out with new stasis stuff. And it's like, wait, the old stasis stuff broke the game. We're just going to keep doing this every season. So they address that a little bit here. So I think that in the future, things are going to be quite a bit more balanced. We'll see though. You know, we're trying to be optimistic. I'm not going to hold my breath too much though, because knowing Bungie, every time they fix one thing, they reintroduce a new problem. That's their like, that's their track record with sandbox changes. They'll fix like something that's so unbelievably broken, but then they'll introduce something that's just even more stupid, but in a different area, you know? So hopefully we don't see, get a hint of that. And hopefully we get just a really nice, fun sandbox that is actually challenging and rewards skill. And uh, I can't wait to grind trials if that is the case, but we'll see. Only time will tell. Let me know your thoughts about this video though in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Later.